Yannick Ngakwe. But first, we welcome to the show the rookie quarterback from the University of Iowa, Nate Stanley. Nate, how's it going, man? Going well, thanks. Starters, for starters right now, being your first year in the NFL, what's been the biggest surprise for you at training camp this year? Um, you know, I think just, just the new protocols with COVID. Um, it was a lot different than what I've been explained it, it would be like in the past. So, um, you know, that's really been the biggest, biggest thing for me this year and the biggest surprise so far. And Nate, as you kind of navigate the early part of your career, you know, whether it's the, the virtual meetings in the offseason now that you're on the field, how much have you learned from, from the Kubiak, both Gary and Clint? I mean, we know Gary's long history, the four-time Super Bowl winner, but how much have you leaned on those two and, and learned from those two? Yeah, I've learned a tremendous amount. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time with Clint this offseason, you know, and then a lot of time with, with Coach Kubiak so far this year. Um, you know, I feel like my football knowledge has increased a lot so far. We, of course, Kirk is the leader of this team, but you get to see him every day in the quarterback room. What kind of leader? What, what kind of leader has he been for you? And what have you learned from? What have you learned from him this year? Yeah, he's really a leader on and off the field. Um, you know, by example that he sets out on the field with his energy, and then in, in the the meeting room as well with you know the questions that he asks. You know, he answers my questions if if I ask him questions. So, you know, he he's helped me a lot. You know, he has no problem you know taking the time to help me learn something, help me look at something, uh, you know, and answer my questions. So I'm you know, really grateful to get to work with him and, and the other two quarterbacks as well. They've, they've helped me a lot as well. And Nate, as you kind of head into the final week of, of practice here before cut down day on the weekend, what, what do you think you've shown coaches the most? I mean, I know Coach Zimmer mentioned your, your big arm the other day, but what have you tried to prove to coaches on the field? I think just that, that I'm, I'm here mentally. You know, I, I know what I'm, I'm doing. I know my reads and progressions. I know my checks. Um, you know, that's, that's a lot of what the off season is, is learning the offense, learning the playbook, uh, you know, and then not having training camp or OTAs this year, um, you know, really try to show that, that I'm, I'm mentally all there, uh, you know, and know what, know what I'm doing out there on the field. So just really trying to take it one day at a time, um, you know, not have any mental mistakes out on the field. Do you feel like that's where your game grew the most so far as just a mental aspect? Definitely. Um, you know, there's always carryover. Uh, you know, from college to the NFL, but where, it, where it's, it's difficult is, is learning new, new offensive systems, new terminology. So I feel like I've, I've done a good job at making sure I, I'm on top of the language. Um, you know, I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but, you know, just doing everything I can to, to make sure I know the offense in and out. Nice, man. Well, best of luck. Look, looking forward to watching you work. Thank you. In other news, the Vikings announced today the signing of defensive end Yannick Ngakwe via trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars in exchange for the Vikings' 2021 second-round draft pick and a conditional fifth-round draft pick in the 2022 draft. Some quick stats for you. In Yannick's four seasons in Jacksonville, he accumulated some impressive stats. 37 and a half sacks, 14 forced fumbles, nine pass deflections, and one touchdown via a pick six against the Cincinnati Beagles, Bengals this past season. Eric, what does this trade mean for the Minnesota Vikings? It's a big one. It means the Vikings got a playmaker. And, you know, it's a, it's a splash move less than two weeks before the start of the regular season. And, you, you know, you, you mentioned all of uh, Ngakwe's stats there. The, the one that stands out to me the most is the 14 force fumble. Yep. I mean, that guy likes to get to the quarterback. He likes to wreck havoc. You know, he's, uh, he's scored two defensive touchdowns in his own career. We see one of them on screen right there. You know, he's a playmaker, and the Vikings defense is, is full of playmakers already. But you add another one at this point in the season with the excitement and everything, yeah, the, the, the defense looked good. Pass rushers. The, the Vikings are known for having two pass rushers. Now you got Ngakwe, you know, pending everything, working out. But you got the Neil Hunt on the other side. What does this mean for this Vikings pass rush? Yeah, it kind of continues the tradition that the Vikings have had even before Mike Zimmer got to Minnesota. You, you think back even to 2008 when Jared Allen was here. You know, he was getting double-digit sacks for six seasons in a row. And then the Vikings drafted uh, Brian Robinson and Everson Griffin, and they kind of carried the torch into the Zimmer era. And then in 2015, the Vikings draft Daniel Hunter, and he's been a star. And now that, you know, we know Everson's gone, you know, and now that uh, Ngakwe is, is on the roster, the Vikings have two star defensive ends yet again. That's what they've had seemingly for the last decade now. They have it again, and it's, it's a nightmare for opposing quarterbacks. Lastly, one quick thing. Who does this help the most? It helps the cornerback group. 
You know, we've talked about those that group a lot this off season, and, and this this training camp especially how it's a young group, but it's a it's a, a talented group. But now when you add Daniil Hunter on one side and uh, Yannick Ngakwe on the other side, and you have two guys who can get to the quarterback in, in, in record time, that means the Viking cornerbacks have to cover for less amount of time than they would have had to. And that's, that's a great boost for the defense. Mike Zimmer talked about that. Andre Patterson talked about that, about how just like coverage and rush, rush and coverage, everything works hand in hand. And if the, if the Vikings can pressure the opposing quarterback with just four defensive linemen, that puts more guys in coverage, and that, that's a good recipe that the Vikings have shown in the last five, six years. Vikings have fifth most sacks in a season ago and the 14th best pass defense a year ago. Moving on to the player spotlight, players that stood out. We'll go defense, offense, special teams. For you, defense. Who's the guy on the defensive, defensive side of the ball that stood out? It's a guy who's probably going to also benefit from Ngakwe, and that's linebacker Eric Kendrick. So, so he, you know, he was the Vikings' lone All-Pro last season, and, and we know how good he is. But to me, he stood out in camp in the fact that he's been consistent every single day. Yeah. You know, he shows up, he he, he makes plays every day. We, we know that that Eric is good against the run. You know, he there's a reason why he's led the Vikings in tackles each of his seasons that he's been here in in, in Minnesota. But what his his versatility and how he can cover the pass really kind of sets him apart from other linebackers in the league. He, he can do both. He can play the run mm -hmm. and go cover a tight end or a running back out in the flat. We saw that in Dallas late in the fourth quarter. But the fact that he can do both makes him a playmaker for this defense, and, and, and that's needed. And, and he stood out to me in camp every day. It's, it's the same Eric, <laughs> Eric Kendrick. We called him the energi Energizer Bunny. Yep. He's the same guy every day. But on offense, Gabe, who, who's the guy that kind of stood out to you as being consistent through the last few weeks? I think the, probably the mo con most consistent guy on offense right now is Irv Smith Jr. He's a guy that's, you know, really been honed in on, you know, the little things. I had a chance to talk to him earlier this year, and he basically said he basically broke down his offensive game. So, you know, he started out with slant routes, stick routes, and then just built from there. Of course, you know, the, the receiving game is what stands out to him, but another big thing that he's really honed in on is blocking. We've seen him more in those two or three tight end sets, you know, you know, setting the edge and doing things like that. He knows that he's a smaller tight end. He has the speed. He can do everything in the passing game, but he wants to be a dual threat and help, you know, the offense, help the defense and basically not say, hey, they're throwing the ball when Irv Smith Jr. gets in. So I think he has been, you know, one of those guys that's ready and ready to look. He looks primed to have another big year in year two. But we can't talk offense and defense without giving the special team guys some love. So special teams, who's a guy that stood out to you? It's a guy that we talked about on the very first show we did a few weeks ago, and it's kicker Dan Bailey. And Dan has, I said it back then, I'm saying it now, Dan has not missed a kick in, in training camp. He's 20 of 20, and that continues his hot streak that he had at the end of the 2019 season. So to end last year, Dan made his final 19 field goals in a row. Mm -hmm. And then he went into the postseason, made all three of those field goals. So he was 22 of 22. And now at the end of his camp, He's made all 20 kicks open to the media in team periods so far in, in the last few weeks. So Dan seems like he's picking up where he left off at the end of last season, and that's a good sign for the Vikings. You, you know they like to play, you know, good defense and, and run the ball, and sometimes that leads to close games where it's only, you know, a touchdown or less, and that's only the margin for victory in the league. So if you have a kicker you can rely on late in the fourth quarter and overtime, and that, that's going to bode well for, for the 2020 season. You talk about kicking, making those kicks when they're open to the media. I think it's you know great to point out practices are now closed to the media. So that you know prohibits us giving, prohibits you giving your three observations from practice. So each day we'll do a player spotlight and go from there. But moving on to the position breakdown, the position we haven't talked about all offseason, the quarterback position. We know court, QB1 is Kirk Cousins. You got Sean May and after that, we just talked to Nate Stanley. You got Jake Browning. But this is a, you know, a position group that, you know, like every other NFL team, a lot is required out of this position group. Talk about, you know, Kirk Cousins and these guys on this list right here. Yeah, so it starts with Kirk, you know, and, and he's been the, almost the face of the franchise since he arrived here a few years ago as a free agent. And he's even gotten better as the years have gone on. He was good in 2018, mm -hmm. but even though his numbers weren't as prolific a season ago, you could argue that he played better. He had less turnovers. Uh, he made the Pro Bowl. The Vikings went to the playoffs. He, he won a playoff game on the road in New Orleans, which is no easy feat. 
he led that overtime drive. You know, he had that, that deep pass to Thielen. He had the touchdown, the game winner to, to Rudolph. Th this is, this is, you know, Kirk Cousins is almost the face of the franchise. He is certainly one of the faces of the offense. And as he goes, the offense kind of goes. And, and we've talked about it before. The offense has kind of tailored what they do to what Kirk does well. You know, um, and we've seen it. We, we've seen it throughout camp: getting on the run, play action, t taking deep shots here and there. You know, Kirk is more comfortable in this system. You know, it's a second year under the Gary Kubiak scheme, um, and, and that seems to be seems to be where Kirk thrives. And I'm, I'm expecting uh, another good season at number eight in 2020. We talk about pass efficiency, how Kirk has been, you know, so good, you know, in pass efficiency last year. You know, fourth for best in QBR, top for fourth for best in completion percentage, but. That right there, you, you see what he can do. What other steps does he need to make that, you know, you can say like, hey, this Vikings offense can make another step if Kirk does this better? I think it's just win big games. And, and, Kirk, and Kirk will probably tell you that himself. He mm -hmm. talked last offseason how a, a big focus on him was to win in the playoffs and have a winning record. And, and he did that. The Vikings went 10-6 and six the season ago. They won in the playoffs, and, and, and Kirk led that drive. Um, so j just keep going. Just keep going. You know, I mean, it's always, you know, they're always trying to break down the next barrier and, and continue down and, and make it to the Super Bowl. And that's certainly the goal once again. All right, moving on to the backup quarterback spot. Sean Mayen, he, he knows his offense inside out. He's got experience. How valuable is he to this quarterback room? He's very valuable. And he, he's a, a guy that maybe does a lot behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he, he only played in one game last year. You know, and started that Week 17 game against Chicago. But the but what he does during the week mm -hmm. and, and helping Kirk get prepared for for each opponent is is very important. You know, he helps Kirk study the opponent's defense. He helps Kirk kind of get up to speed on what they're going to focus on in the playbook this week. You know, he's he's a great sounding board in the meetings in, in, in the QB position room. You know, Sean has NFL experience. He was a third round pick a few, a few years ago. And while, you know, he hasn't started a bunch of games, he has seen a lot of football from the sideline, and that helps. You know, Kirk has, has, to, has told me before in the past, hey, if I see something on uh, during the game, you know, I'll go to Sean and be like, hey, what, what, did, what did you see there? And, and Sean, you know, gr give great advice for that. And so, you know, Sean isn't going to, you know, be the, be the starter. We know that. But he's a great resource for Kirk. And that's what you want out of a backup, a guy who can bring your starting quarterback along, make sure he's ready to go on Sunday. And Sean fits that role perfectly. And I think it's another point to know that he helps the defense out, too. You know, being that, that special, not that special team, but that, that scout team guy that can give him a, a really good look. So having that help for Kirk and then having that help for, deep, for the defensive side of the ball is key for that backup quarterback position. But... There's four more days of practice this week. So, guys, make sure you stay tuned right here to Vikings.com and following the Vikings on all of your, so all of your social media platforms for the most up-to-date coverage of the team. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow at 4.15. Stay safe.